When billions vanished, innovation prevailed. Experience the incredible story of a $32.1 billion Chinese chip order cancellation and China's groundbreaking leap with their revolutionary domestic lithography machine. Amid U.S. chip limitation rules, the Chinese chip sector is undergoing a dramatic shift. China has responded by moving decisively in the direction of reaching self-sufficiency. China is giving local chip production top priority with the lofty goal of achieving a 70% self-sufficiency rate in chips. The increased research and development efforts Shanghai Microelectronics has made in the area of lithography machines are a noteworthy development in this endeavor. Chinese businesses have successfully accepted the first lithography machine made locally, which is a significant achievement and an indication of this growth. China is currently the largest chip market in the world, and it significantly depends on imported integrated circuits. High-end chip imports account for a large portion of the money spent on high-end consumer electronics each year, including tablets, PCs, and smartphones. China's existing production capability, nevertheless, is insufficient to produce high-end chips with nanoscale sizes of seven or less. Their primary technological specialization is at established process nodes like 14 and 28 nanometers. The rising use of big data, cloud computing, and artificial intelligence applications, however, has increased demand for mature semiconductor products. The market requires ongoing innovation to keep up with the demand for better chip performance and lower power consumption as these technologies continue to expand. For the mature chip market to stay in step with changing consumer demands and maintain its growth trajectory, the introduction of new semiconductor products becomes essential. So what actually has the U.S. lost by imposing so-called restrictions on China? We will explore that shortly. SMIC, a Chinese chip manufacturer, is significantly increasing the shipment of its 28 nanometer chips while simultaneously extending the 12-inch wafer capacity for mature devices. Given that China now has its own domestically created chips, this move shows that the country is becoming less dependent on imported chips. Notably, China imported 108.2 billion integrated circuits in the first quarter of this year, representing a huge 22.9% year-over-year decline, or a decrease of 32.1 billion chips compared to the same period last year. As a result, an astounding 32.1 billion chip orders were canceled, making it difficult for foreign chip firms to turn a profit. These developments highlight China's steadily increasing semiconductor sector self-sufficiency. The first domestically built lithography machine was successfully incorporated into Chinese businesses' operations during the first quarter of this year, marking yet another milestone in the country's chip sector. It is noteworthy that Conscience, a Chinese company, used the cutting-edge packaging lithography machine from Shanghai Microelectronics for a significant production line project. As only the businesses in China able to produce full lithography machines, Shanghai Microelectronics is a unique enterprise. Shanghai Microelectronics has made great progress in the field of front-end lithography machines, achieving a process mask production capability of 90 nanometers. Shanghai Microelectronics also excels in the back-end lithography machine sector and has the ability to produce sophisticated packaging lithography machines with 2.5D and 3D capabilities. So before we proceed further and differentiate between the back-end and front-end components of the lithography machine, Make sure you have hit the like and subscribe button to get instant notifications of the videos. Now let's continue. The contrast between front-end and back-end lithography equipment, which are important in the manufacture of semiconductor chips, may not be well known by many people. The main function of front-end lithography equipment is to produce lithographic masks, which are used to project chip design patterns onto silicon wafers to produce complex designs. However, these patterns are etched into the silicon wafer by back-end lithography tools, which eventually shapes the chip circuitry. Higher resolution and precision are required by front-end lithography machines, but faster processing speeds and powerful etching capabilities are needed by back-end lithography machines. Front-end lithography equipment unquestionably presents more production difficulties, requiring very accurate optical systems, exact mechanical systems, and reliable control systems. It is crucial to be an expert in several fields, including physics, optics, and mechanics. With its front-end lithography equipment, especially its highly sought-after EUV lithography equipment, ASML, a major player in the industry, has accomplished high-end processes of 5 nanometers and below. The market, however, is still lacking in this cutting-edge equipment. On the other hand, 
Front-end lithography devices are made domestically in China now and have a mass production process limit of 90 nanometers, so there is still tremendous space for advancement. The lithography device recently adopted by Chinese businesses belongs to the back-end category and primarily satisfies the need for chip packaging. However, for domestic chips, improved packaging is quite important. This is because cutting-edge packaging technology increases chip performance while lowering chip size and cost and increasing reliability and power efficiency. Utilizing cutting-edge packaging technology improves chips' ability to compete on the market draws in more customers, encourages collaboration, and propels the development of China's domestic chip sector. China's progress towards self-sufficiency is unintentionally accelerated by the regular limitations the United States imposes on Chinese chips. Chinese businesses provided solid proof by canceling $32.1 billion in semiconductor imports and successfully integrating the first domestic lithography machine. Foreign media have mirrored Bill Gates' arguments pointing out that the U.S. cannot stop China from developing strong semiconductors. Contrarily, restrictions will only serve to strengthen China's push for independence while causing the loss of several high-paying employment jobs in the U.S. The evidence supports Bill Gates' claims, as the chip industry shows apparent signs of self-sufficiency, whereas the American technology sector has seen over 130,000 job cuts countrywide from January to May of this year for a startling total of over 410,000 layoffs. The United States will only hurt its own company's earnings, cause more jobs to be lost, and realize its mistake after it's too late if it continues with its restrictive measures. Although China is increasingly producing more chips domestically, U.S. businesses are dependent on exporting chips to the Chinese market. High-end chips still need to be imported for the time being, but it won't be long before China makes significant achievements in high-end chip manufacturing technology addressing many of the current problems. Bill Gates has pushed the United States to change strategy after wisely recognizing this truth. The consequences of not taking this advice will fall solely on the shoulders of the United States. The reputation of American chip giants like Qualcomm, AMD, and Micron has taken a sharp hit as China's chip sector grows. According to data, Qualcomm's net profit fell by 42% in the second quarter of its fiscal year 2023 compared to the same period last year as chip orders and prices fell substantially. The result astounded foreign media because it was previously unimaginable. It is now possible that Chinese consumers may stop buying American chips. However, the outside world has misjudged the resolve and potential of China's chip industry's rise. According to recent sources, Chinese chiplet technology has advanced significantly with Tongfu Microelectronics overcoming the difficulties posed by the 5 nanometer process technology. With this success, China has managed to get over Western restrictions on EUV lithography equipment and is now prepared to produce high-end chips in large quantities. Huawei should be commended for this outstanding development as it switched its attention to the creation of new quantum processors in response to the U.S. semiconductor embargo. The market for chips is predicted to move toward quantum chips in the future. Huawei made an incredible 110 billion won investment in this project in just nine months. When Huawei revealed the development of a new patent for superconducting quantum circuits, it proved that such a substantial investment has paid off. By eliminating crosstalk between quantum bits and vastly enhancing calculation speed and accuracy, this groundbreaking solution solves long-standing issues encountered by the American chip manufacturer Intel. China's chips have so surpassed the United States in this area by making a significant advancement by choosing a different course. With its decision to reduce orders for hundreds of billions of chips and the successful integration of the first domestically built lithography equipment by Chinese firms, China is making great progress in reducing its dependency on the United States. Furthermore, China's resolve to free itself from external dependence is demonstrated by Huawei's release of a novel form of quantum chip and the establishment of a homegrown production facility for photon chips. China is positioned to attain the same level of success in the home chip market that it has in the domains of new energy and biotechnology. As we conclude this eye-opening exploration into China's journey towards chip self-sufficiency, the concerns expressed by industry titan Bill Gates echo in our minds. With China steadily advancing towards a future of abundant domestic chips, a thought-provoking question emerges. If China achieves chip self-sufficiency, will it still rely on American chips, even if they become available again? 
Join us in our next video as we delve deeper into the implications of China's chip industry growth and the potential shift in the global tech landscape. Also, do share your thoughts in the comments section below and stay connected.